Hi there! Hello fans, friends, and family. I am the Adman, the Adamant Adman of Chaos, and welcome to First Try VR, where we try VR-related titles and we give you our first impressions. What we're doing today is something... This happened a few weeks ago, and I just wanted to talk about it. You see, I went to this anime animation convention recently, but, 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 you're probably thinking something like... Comic-Con, or PAX, or something more to that effect. You're part right. You see, I went to an event called Multicon VR. I do want to specify, I think there's a different Multicon out there. This is specifically Multicon VR. As far as I know, there's no connection. You see, one day in February, I got an email from High Fidelity VR, their marketing uh, campaign. High Fidelity VR, they're one of a few different social VR apps out there. I dabbled with it before. It's a, a social VR app where, like VR Chat or Allspace, uh, you wear an avatar, you're in a virtual environment, and you can interact with people. Now, social VR is a very interesting construct to me. You know, we've seen social developments uh, over time using technology. Started with chat rooms, online forums, now we got things like Facebook and everything else under the sun. This is a, a different experience, because in a way, you're there, and it adds a kind of unusual realism to it. Uh, you're talking to someone who's completely polygonal, but like a person, they can move, gesture, make eye contact, and actually have something to say. And this is crazy, because it's very realistic, because it is real. I was not prepared for this, because it was a very different feeling. And as interesting as I find the whole social VR thing, I'm gonna be honest, uh, this, this might be the introvert in me, but I don't go out of my way to be social that often. So hang in there, we're gonna get to, I'm gonna break down virtually, <laughs> virtually. I'm gonna break down just about every detail I can think of on this. I'm gonna give a little more detail on how high fidelity VR works. You see, it's kind of like VR chat in the sense that players, characters, people, whatever you want to call them, they wear different avatars. They can look however they want. And High Fidelity is no exception. It's got a lot of uh, different preloaded outfits, costumes, avatars. You could be a, a robot, a random person, a Power Ranger if you really want to be. A lot of the users on here are creative individuals. Uh, it's a creativity-driven community that uses High Fidelity. People who are into 3D modeling and uh, rigging characters so that they can be used as avatars. It is a place for creativity. And it's not limited to just, you know, the player's appearance. People are creating their own worlds, their own environments. And that, my friends, is going to be a big part of this coming up. So with all of this going on, that what people are creating from scratch, really the only limit is their talent and their imagination. So finally the day arrived, and I was instantly impressed by what I got to see. Like I said, my, my expectations, they were low, but they kept going up as time went on. High Fidelity is kind of, they're still fairly new, they're smaller than a lot of their competition right now. But you can tell they put a lot into this, and it was their own community that helped make this thing possible. They took their seemingly meager resources and built them together into something greater than the sum of their parts. Normally what you'd expect when you go to one of these kind of things, one of these uh, fun, geeky conventions, is some sort of big convention center. Just brick and concrete all over the place, bunch of tables set up, maybe a few rooms set up for uh, celebrity panels or whatnot. And, uh, you know, just about everyone's wearing something, either full-on costume or something a little goofy. They took advantage of VR. Uh, first of all, let's drop the convention center imagery. You know what this creative community did? They built a city. Yeah, you know, you go there, there's a big downtown area. There's a residential area. They, they've got a park in the middle of the place. Big blue sky up above that just automatically made it for a cheerier atmosphere than you would typically get from uh, any of these other kind of experiences. So when I first signed in, uh, the session I joined had about maybe 80 people at the time, and that number only grew as I walked around. This place was packed, but it gave you a feeling that there are people everywhere, but not so much at like, claustrophobic levels. 
because, again, this was a city that you were just hanging out in, walking around, and you would see groups of people hanging out, chatting, people walking around, looking around, you know, just exploring the town. And that was great. That was automatically great. You know, people at conventions talk and stuff, but this is on a different scale. And being the internet, and I don't think I have to explain it to you, people on the internet are crazy. No, you might be one of them. I, I don't know. So, no offense. So what I did from there was I took a walk around. I wanted to see what the, all there was, so I took a casual stroll town. I went downtown, I went to the neighborhoods, uh, everywhere in between, and it was fun. Just a nice, casual, chill experience. And you know what was really neat about this? As I walked on, I noticed these are familiar places. I took a look at some of the buildings and they were made by their community and included as part of the uh, floor plan of this convention. I went downtown, I saw the Planet Express building from Futurama and it looked good, honestly. Walked down the street more and uh, I found a Pokemon Center. I went to the neighborhoods, I found a house from Up. I found the house from Invader Zim. They did such a good, loving job of not only building all these things, but, you know, making it, the floor plan and everything, feel very natural. But if you uh, take a good, look, close look at a lot of these buildings, you'll see that these were made by members of their own community. These were created by different users, that this was a collaborative effort, creating all of this, which is not something I was expecting. It was so professionally done, everyone got involved, and that's not something you usually see at uh, these kind of events. Usually they're more sponsored by a bigger corporation or uh, some sort of uh, industry. For them being new to this kind of thing, they got an excellent start. Oh, oh, one thing I want to mention, uh, in addition to being able to walk around, you can fly. So once I just took a casual trip around everywhere, I took to the sky and I looked around and just looked at this island city that was beneath me. Just to see it all, it put into scale. I really appreciated what effort was put into this. And that was a lot of effort. Now I want to compare what they did with this virtual experience to what I've seen for a lot of live experiences. So this is themed about animation. It's a convention. But it's also shaped like a town and kind of like a uh, like going to an art fair or some other public event. For example, depending on what the event may be, you might see a live artist. Could be anything from balloon animals to caricatures to this or that. Uh, what I would closest compare it to is maybe doing a sidewalk drawing. You know, there's some talented artists out there. They'll preserve an area of concrete and make a beautiful mural that you feel like you could almost jump into a la Mary Poppins. What we had here was a little different. Keep in mind, we're talking virtual reality. So we're not limited to just actual physical mediums of expression. What they had there, they had a guy his job was to create art live. It was a, think about Google Tilt Brush. That's kind of what we were experiencing. Three-dimensional art created in a virtual space. And I really liked how he incorporated the environment itself into his design. For example, he made a, around a telephone pole, a light pole kind of thing, a, a snake just going around it. It was kind of a cute cartoony snake. I think he made one of those uh, banana emoticon people, the peanut butter jelly thing back from the early 2000s. I hated that, but it was still kind of cool to see it there. Went around the corner and you could see a uh, part of the city's design were some famous robots. So he had one shooting purple juice at some sort of pineapple man. Um, Okay, I'm not going to pretend I understand what was going on, but it was still fun to have it happen. So I talked to the guy a little bit uh, as he was doing this stuff, and other than looking like a pile of melted crayons, he seemed to be like a nice guy, he had a lot of talent, had some good advice uh, for people about like if they wanted to start a Patreon or anything to kind of help support themselves as artists. It was actually pretty swell that they was there and was helping people in addition to entertaining people with his art. But here's something fun. They did not forget to include interactive things going on for this event. Case in point, 
downtown Central City Square, whatever you want to call it, they were having a trivia contest. Now, what was fun about this was, way you can't possibly do this in real life, or at least not comfortably, not on a practical level. What they did was, they had a, pla a place for the participants. It was a big, giant square, divided up into quadrants, A, B, C, D. Players would jump into it, they'd get kind of encapsulated in it, locked in, and there was a host with a giant billboard. And on the billboard would be the questions and the multiple choice answers to it. And they were all, of course, animation themed. And what they did was, in order to select your answer, you have to be standing on the correct part of that square. So if you want to answer A, be on the A area, and so forth and so forth, uh, what would happen would be, if you pass, if you got the correct answer, well then, you move on. If you did not get the right answer, you're ejected out of this thing. You're teleported back into the audience, and the people remaining get to carry on. It's like I got booted out surprisingly early. I'm a little disappointed about that. It's animation. I love animation. And as I walked around, seeing people just doing different activities in this big space, it really, really reminded me of Ready Player One, uh, the Oasis. People would be interacting with each other, doing their own things. It's not small private rooms, uh, sessions being hosted separately. Everyone was there together. And just like Ready Player One, everyone was basically dressed as some sort of pop culture reference. But also, like you remember Ready Player One, for the most part, people acted sane. I mean, for pretty much any other game online on the internet, people or players would be jumping around or getting in people's faces up no obnoxiously close. They behaved like you would want a real life individual to do. I had a hard time fathoming that. I've seen people online before, even in VR, but this just had a whole different feel to it. Uh, much more calm, but still very realistic. And I want to see more of that, because you don't see that too often. This is what blew my mind about Multicon, is that people felt more like people than I have ever seen before in VR. Uh, I couldn't believe it. With the exception of maybe Echo VR half the time. The other half the time I have mute people. So I kept exploring this virtual town, and uh, in between the Central Park area and the neighborhood was this outdoor auditorium of sorts. And I went inside and found this is where they were going to be hosting panels. Um, again, for real life conventions of this sort, there will often be rooms reserved uh, for famous guests or more people like how to start your own webcomic or 101 or kind of these in life, real life discussions that they'll have someone behind a microphone maybe asking people in the audience questions. What they had here was spot on and a half. <laughs> it was at least one and a half times better than the real thing. I dare say two times better than the real thing. Uh, what they did was, and when I got in there, the room was packed with virtual people. Up front, they had a stage, uh, and they had uh, some MCs uh, preparing the event, getting the crowd a little entertained and excited for what was going on. Explained a few rules. They asked people to please be quiet during this. And again, quick example, people were well behaved. Yeah, they were a lot of pre-show chatter, people were moving around a little bit, but none of it was to an obnoxious scale. They were all here for the same reason, and they wanted to see this live panel. I wanted to see this myself, and this... <laughs> this was one of the most ridiculous things for me, about me, uh, during this whole thing. I got so immersed into this, I treated it like a real room of crowded people. This, these are all virtual people. I mean, the people are real, but their bodies are virtual. They have no physical presence. You can walk right through them. What did I do? I was serpentining through people. <laughs> because I wanted to be polite. I didn't want to just, you know, walk through someone because, you know, you walk through someone, you get an unhealthy view of the inside of their skull. It's a kind of a disturbing, kind of breaks the immersion as well. And more than once, I caught myself saying, uh, excuse me, uh, pardon, pardon me, sorry. You know, <laughs> there was no need for it. But I got so sucked into this experience that, that, that I, for, I forgot it for a minute. It went so far that when I found a nice empty spot for myself, it was kind of near the front and the, I was 
the body I chose characters, and I was this robot guy that was just cool looking. But I was taller than a lot of the other avatars that were there. So like, once I got in position, I'm like looking, making sure there's no short people, <laughs> um, digital <laughs> shortness. Uh, so, because I didn't want to block anyone's view. I was like, I'm like, do I have to crouch down? Do I have to sit down? And it gets better. Without any further ado, they introduced their guest of honor, a voice actor named James Arnold Taylor. While I was not familiar with the name uh, walking into this, they did mention a lot of the roles that he's played. He's had a long career, and I've recognized a good deal of them. To me, he was famous because apparently he was the voice actor for Obi-Wan Kenobi in the Clone Wars animated series. He's good. He does a lot of good voice acting. I looked him up after the fact, and he's got a long career. He's got a long list of voices he's done. Now, you may remember, and I have mentioned back in the day on the channel, that I love voice acting. It's, it's actually something I considered myself to possibly pursue. I didn't get very far down that road. I went more the YouTube route, uh, as well as a few other things I experimented with. Voice acting is something that really makes something powerful. We're talking about animation here. Good voice acting really sells it, which is amazing considering the actor himself isn't on the screen in any shape or form. All right, I've mentioned a few times already, and I'm going to mention it once more. Everyone's wearing an avatar. Nobody looks real like they do in real life. Uh, they look like famous characters or this or that. James Taylor, what was interesting about him, his avatar was a realistic representation of his real self. There's a reason I think this is interesting, because it really makes you feel that he is there. Imagine if he looked like some anything else, if he looked like some generic face that we don't recognize, we're gonna kind of lose that attachment that we're talking to this voice actor. If he spent the entire time looking like one of the characters he played, he'd feel like you're talking to Ratchet or Titus or Obi-Wan and not the voice actor. By choosing to look like himself, it shows that he is putting himself in there. Once the panel kicked off, things went really great. Uh, he talked a bit about himself, things he's done in the past, but he had this great presentation. It basically, it was the history of voice acting. And what he did was, up behind him was a, a virtual slideshow presentation of sorts. It was animated, it was a little more to it than that. But his presentation was great. It was all about the history of voice acting. Not so much a detailed and this year of whatever, you know, not, it wasn't so much educational, but gave you the feel of the last, what, hundred years that, that voice acting has been available, uh, how, how, however you want to look at it. It was, it was a hoot. I wish, I don't know if it's okay to show a presentation like this on YouTube, so I'm gonna just leave it alone. But I will tell you about it. Nothing can stop me from that. He started off uh, with that, and then as he was reenacting history and just caricature and parody of and cliche of everything else, the way he started things off was talking about like old time radio. And the whole time he talked in an old time radio voice. Really getting into it. And he was diving into drama that, that you might hear over the, over the old school radio, radio dramas. And then he was talking about sports and it's just, he did a voice for everything. And it was non-stop. One thing after another. He's got a video behind him. And as far as I know, he couldn't see it. So just being in sync with what was going on was impressive by itself. He kept moving forward in time and it eventually got to like 80s style video of got milk, you know, got st stuff like that. Got, as it got more and more modern, it was uh, started style of movie trailers, things like in a world where voice acting is against the law. Or, well, I, I don't remember it word for word. And, you know, I'm trying to fit in my own voice acting. <laughs> I am like so uncomfortable. <laughs> Eventually got to the end and, you know, overly dramatic saying how wherever there are words that need to be read off of a piece of paper, a voice actor will be there to take the call. And, oh man, it was just so great. And at the end, Everyone, if they weren't already standing, they stood up and applauded. You can see a room full of virtual people, 
and over the earpiece, you can hear the clackety clack of controllers banging together. Just wild applause and, and cheering for him. Can't see his facial expressions, but you can see his body movements. And body language was saying he was just taken away. He did mention on this and how great this experience it was for him, because he can see the appreciation of this virtual audience as if they were actually there. That is just not something I've seen before. And it's not something I've even considered before. It might have been in the PC versus uh, cell phone VR video about how we're still in that fledgling development state of VR. And it's got so much potential and we're only discovering it after we have it available. Now, the sad part was my time was cut short. I, I had plans in actual reality that I couldn't ignore. I only spent maybe about 30 to 40 minutes inside Multicon VR. This was just so exciting that that short, finite experience just opened my mind to a whole bunch of new ideas for virtual reality that I did, they didn't dawn on me before this. I mean, I've had ideas of how it can be used, but this was new and this was exciting. And I had to make a video about this. Uh, I decided it pretty much the day of that I need to make a video about how wild of an experience this was. And as far as I'm aware, this isn't going to be the end of it. There's so many places that virtual reality can go. There's so many uses for it, so many ways we can interact with other real human beings and options we couldn't do in real life. I forgot to mention that during uh, the panel, but as he's going through the decades and he's bringing up video games, they must have flipped a switch. They changed his avatar to look like Titus from Final Fantasy. Take advantage of the impossible. Different types of potential we don't otherwise have access to. So thank you for hearing me out, thank you for listening to my story. So, as usual, just as every other YouTuber has mentioned, please like and subscribe, I really appreciate it. In fact, I've seen some growth recently with the channel, and I really appreciate it to know that people are liking what I'm doing. In fact, we are getting close to 100 subscribers right now, and it's been a long road. I've been at this for two years now, and that's going to be a milestone for me, an actual milestone, not like that 100,000 milestone video I made. I love that video, though. It's so stupid, but I love it. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much, everyone. And who knows, maybe, I don't have any ideas yet, but if we hit 100 subscribers, maybe we'll do something cool to celebrate it. So, other than that, that's everything I got for today. Thank you again for hearing me out, and I look forward to bringing more soon. So, in the meantime, take care. See you later.